Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's good to be with you. I'm Craig Daly, Vice President of Global Sales for Touchstone Essentials. And I am here with Cindy Clement tonight. Uh, and you all know Cindy, um, as before, we introduce her every time. She is an acclaimed speaker, published author, nutritionist, herbalist, adjunct professor. Uh, Cindy, I've known you for 30 years and uh, you've been doing this a long time. We want to recognize her for her amazing book, Your Body's Environmental Chemical Burden, that's won lots of awards. Um, take a look at that book. Uh, you'll really love it. Cindy, I don't see a special picture here tonight. You've left it off this time. I know. I didn't get it up in time. My gr I'll do it next time. Uh, my granddaughter was here for the weekend and we did carrot juice and celery juice and apple juice. And it, they're just adorable. She fell in love with the carrot juice. So now I've got a, I'm teaching her to be a health nut, actually. So. Good for you. Good for you. Starting them young, right? Say, yeah. We want pictures next week. So got it. Oh, you got it. Cindy, what are we talking about tonight? We are going to be talking about VOCs tonight, and VOCs are volatile organic compounds, and they're emitted into the air in all different ways, mostly industrial processing or uh, fuel exhaust. A lot of these things you can smell, like when you're following a car and you know your outside air is on and you're close, and all of a sudden the car smells like fuel. Those are what I'm talking about, or or artificial fragrances, or paint thinner, the smell of that. So it's mostly those kinds of things that we're going to be talking about, and all of us are exposed in one way or another. I've never really thought about this, but but volatile oils are things that you can smell and that have an aroma. So volatile organic compounds are yeah. also things that you can smell and have an aroma. Is yeah. that right? Okay, well, that's an interesting way to look at this. I haven't really thought about it that way. That will help me remember. Yeah, but I, I don't like that they're called volatile organic compounds because people think organic means that it's good. <laughs> and these certainly are not, as we'll talk about tonight. Well, awesome. We're excited to learn all about it. Take it away. Okie dokie. So there are about... Um, there are many, many different types of uh, VOCs, but there are, are about 10 that are regulated, fairly regulated by the EPA. But the top five are known as BTEXS. And you can see them here, the benzene, uh, toluene, um, uh, ethyl benzene, xylene, as well as styrene. And they're they're in this family of compounds that, again, that we are all regularly exposed to. So what I want to do tonight is, is take a look at where we are exposed to these chemicals. Um, and, and one of the things is the artificial fragrances. So you, you talked about the essential oils. Well, that's a, a, a very um, plant odor that we are smelling, not an artificial. So these artificial fragrances that are added to household products, the cleaning products and things like that, there are several hundred of these that are classified as either hazardous or even toxic under federal rulings. And when these chemicals are mixed into the air, this is when they're inhaled, you know, by by the occupants. Oops, I want to go back to that slide for just a minute. There was a study, I thought this was interesting, done on common, so very, you know, uh, laundry products that are fragrance that are very common, not these obscure ones, but something, and they don't never really name the products in these studies, but they looked at laundry detergent as well as dryer sheets. And what they found, and what they did was they, they went to the dryer vent and they somehow captured which of those VOCs were coming out. And they found over 25 different VOCs emitted from these dryer vents, two of which were classified as carcinogenic and seven of those chemicals as hazardous. Um, and the, the important thing to note is that none of these VOCs are listed on the label, the product label, because Having these chemicals on the label is not mandated on a household product, only on our food products and our personal care products. So we're breathing things as we clean our home or our car or things like that with 
we have no idea what's in these products. Um, or think about fragranced candles that people light, you know, or those those plugins that people. I, I I remember going into somebody's home years ago, and in every room they had this thing plugged into the wall that was clear, and it had liquid in it, and there were these awful awful smells coming from each and every room. And this person says, well, I like the way they smell. And I was there for less than 10 minutes and couldn't believe how my head felt because I'm not used to that kind of stuff, right? So it's it's just fragrances that are emitted sometimes. And I know I've talked a lot about bottled water, but if you need one more reason to get rid of the bottled water, the traces of VOC compounds leach from the plastic bottle into the water, especially under high temperatures and humidity. And the VOC concentration also increases with exposure to UV light as well as storage time. And in fact, researchers found that after just five months of storage in sunlight of bottled water, the concentrations of xylene and ethyl benzene increased expo exponentially. And then toluene was found in every single sample of water or, or bottled water, regardless of whether or not it was uh, directly affected by sunlight or stored in the sunlight. So there's just you know, so many ways that 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 we become um, exposed to, to these different chemicals. Now, I'm sure you don't have these statistics in your head, but studies report that we only, as humans, only spend adults, that is, two to seven percent of our time outdoors. We spend another one to seven percent of our time in an enclosed motor motor vehicle, and about eighty to ninety three percent of our life indoors. And that means our homes, our churches, our malls, you know, our our occupation, all of that. And the, and these indoor levels of toxic chemicals often exceed what's in the outside by anywhere from two times to 100 times greater. And it's not, like I said, just the fragrances that are the problem. Um, for instance, if we're this indoor exposure can occur from breathing the vapors that come from products that contain something called benzene. And, and benzene is found in, oh my goodness, so many things. It's found in paint. And so think about remodeling or, or even just, you know, uh, sprucing up your home on the inside. It's the paints and the thinners and the varnishes and the glues and the and the adhesives and the the cleaning things, the detergents, the mothballs, the furniture wax, or even personal care, the nail polishes or the hair dyes or art supplies or or things like that, like marking pens or or things. So as well as if you smoke. In a cigarette indoors, the benzene is one of the most dominant toxins in cigarette smoke and, of course, has been associated with an increased risk of leukemia. Now, these statistics show that levels of benzene are anywhere from 30 to 50 times 50% higher in a smoker's home than in a non-smoker's home. And remember, that whole secondhand smoke, you're not just breathing the smoke, you're getting that benzene. So it's an important uh, source of exposure of benzene. But Benzene is really also formed naturally in processes such as a forest fire or a volcano. And, and toluene is also present in emissions from forest, fire, uh, forest fires as well as volcanoes. So it's not just the chemicals, they're naturally far, uh, uh, formed in these types of, of weather conditions or um, you know the forest fires, et cetera. Now, we can also be exposed by uh, burning wood in our wood stoves to keep warm. On the gas heating and cooking, we're exposed to these chemicals. Uh, as I mentioned before, the automobile admissions, and, and they can 
when you park your car in the garage or let's say you open the garage door in the morning, it's a cold winter morning and you, you open the garage door and you start your car, bad news, back the car out first because those uh, different fumes can migrate into the home or even when you open the door and go in. And, and why I say this is because um, we've had some remodeling going on and my husband and I are really fanatic about chemicals and we have this beautiful uh, air sanitizer just near the garage door. So when the workers are coming in and out, we monitor it and it has a dial on it. And it shows us a number of how toxic the air is. And what we found is so fascinating. Even when the garage door is open and if the air quality is bad outside, we've had a lot of smoke from the Canadian fires here in Michigan that dial will go up to 98, which is bad. You want it, of course, at zero. Or if they're coming in and out with, you know, different kinds of chemicals, you can see it. But what's wonderful about these purifiers is that you just dial it up. And in about 20 minutes, it gets that air back down to zero. So we love our units. But um, if, if people are using um, a charcoal or or um, any kind of lighting fluid, that's benzene. And of course, I, I mentioned the candles in the home, but they can increase the air concentrations of benzene in the home by 12%, um, depending on, of course, the candle that's being used. And then also we have our home offices now. And so these VOCs are emitted when we have our home printer, our home copier. And how that happens is because the, the heat from the copier or the printer, what it does is it bonds the toner particles to the paper, and then those residues are released and emitted from those materials. So again, without even thinking about it, there are so many different ways in our home that we may, may be exposed. There was a study done about 10 years ago that showed that even in standby mode, our printers and, and copiers and things like that both emit particulate matter as well as the VOCs and that we should really turn them completely off, even if we're not using them and not leave them in, in just kind of a, a standby mode. Um, also, that the, the toluene, if you've ever opened a magazine and smelled that like, oh, this is that magazine smell. That's one of those VOCs as well. So newsstands and press rooms, they have high concentrations of VOCs. And again, our personal copiers, our, our personal printers and things like that. But we can also, as I mentioned, be exposed to these VOCs through our building and renovation materials, our, our furniture, um, art supplies, and things like that. So they did this study that I found on personal copiers and they found they tested 62 different models for just the the ultra fine particles. So the things we can't see, we can't even smell, they're so tiny. And what they found is one third of those 62 models emitted these ultra fine particles in high levels. And these ultra fine particles are small enough to enter even the tiniest of our passageways, our respiratory passageways. And then of course, that adds to health concerns of our respiratory system, our immune system, as well as our nervous system. And they also found that people that work in copy shops or work in an office max or an office depot in that copy area, they do have an increase in immune system disorders from breathing these VOCs all day long. So that's another way that we're exposed. But let's look at dietary exposure of VOCs. They did a, a five-year study, the EPA did, on and, and they analyzed nearly every food that they could. And they found that benzene was in almost every food because foods that are processed at high temperatures or by irradiation, they're linked to benzene. And even though there are no safe levels that have been determined yet for our foods, we find that we are being um, exposed through eating and drinking. So the sad part is, is that benzene is absorbed 100% when we ingest it and approximately 50% when we inhale it. And then think about the styrofoam, the styrene, the VOC styrene, which makes our styrofoam. It can migrate from the food packaging from 
anything with a, a number six recycling code from Teflon, from those plastic or foam egg cartons, disposable cups and plates, carry out containers, those styrofoam trays that they use to pack the meat in. So these chemicals, these VOCs can transfer to the foods and the beverages, and that's how we get them into our system. And it's especially true when hot foods and hot beverages are placed in styrofoam or microwaved in containers that are made with styrene or styrofoam. And once again, as the temperature increases, that migration increases. Um, and then also we've got um, polystyrene, which is those containers that they use for milk or yogurt containers. And so they have found high concentrations of styrenes in those foods as well, due to that increase that happens during storage. Now, the association between these chemicals and the related health effects that we have becomes really problematic when people are exposed to these varying concentrations and mixtures over time. So the, think about uh, the clearance of xylene or ethyl benzene are going to take longer when the, there are other VOCs present in the blood and, and the higher concentrations are contributing to these multiple chemical sensitivities that some people have, susceptible people have. Now, the short-term effects of being exposed to VOCs can include those headaches, which I had when I went into this home with these little, I think they were called blade plugins or something. Um, the short-term effects can be uh, headaches or dizziness, um, uh, irritation, of course, of the eyes or the respiratory tract. But the long-term exposure can result in damage to the central nervous system, the kidneys, as well as the liver. And these VOCs can cause sleep dis disturbances and have been linked to neuropsychiatric symptoms, um, finding that uh, the more a person is exposed long-term to these chemicals, there can be an increased risk of depression, um, just even from low and moderate levels of exposure to VOCs. Um, we also find that these VOCs, um, there's a link between exposure and cardiovascular disease, visual problems, auditory complications, and they also have found an association between exposure to VOCs and hypertension or high blood pressure and the increased risk of coronary artery disease. Um, they also know that many of these VOCs are neurotoxic, which is why it's affecting our central nervous system. And when it's neurotoxic, it can affect that visual skill, that motor skill, that cognitive functioning. And, and really, it can also result in toxicity to the, to the reproductive system. Now, the interesting thing is some of these VOCs, like xylene, their levels increase in those that have more adipo adipose fat tissue, because as we've mentioned before, many of the chemicals are, are, they love fats, they love fats, they love storing in fats. And so once absorbed, these chemicals circulate through the system and these highest levels then are deposited into fat, which is just another reason that we need to be mindful of weight management, if, if nothing else, to, to know that these toxicants are stored into fat, which is why if a person isn't detoxifying, when they go on a weight loss program, they feel miserable because as the fat cells shrink and these chemicals enter the bloodstream, they literally feel toxic. They've got headaches. They feel awful. So it's always important in a weight loss program to make sure that people are detoxifying as well. Now, when it comes to pregnancy and nursing, the research is showing that the, some of these VOCs, especially benzene, can pass from the mother's exposure to that fetus. And benzene itself has been detected in cord blood. It's been detected in breast milk. And it's also been found to cause an increase in the incidence of premature birth. We also know that nursing infants can be exposed to these VOCs through breast milk. Um, and that older children, so not just the infants or in the womb, but the older children can also be affected by these VOCs, especially, again, the benzene. And, and, the, and their exposure has been associated with wheezing and asthma and bronchitis 
and things like that. So again, as these toxicants pass from the mother uh, through the placenta and through the the breast milk, it can become problematic. Now there's a chemical that the uh, toluene, this is an interesting one because elevated uh, toluene vapors are actually found near the ground, the lower to the ground, that's where the toluene is. And the children then, these younger children who are crawling are exposed to higher levels than our adults because that's where they are, that's where their world is, is on the floor. Now, of course, the absorption is going to take place breathing it in, inhalation, but again, it's distributed throughout the body to the liver, the lungs, the brain, the kidneys, uh, the adrenal glands, the, the skin, the bone marrow, and again, that adipose fat tissue. Now, I wanted to just share this because I don't think very many people know this, but um, there's a story about the soy industry. It's not all bad, but um, what what they had been doing prior to 2009 until it was exposed is there's a, a, a method called hexane processing method. Now, remember, hexane is, is one of those um, chemicals of the VOC chemicals that are one of the five that are, we are most frequently um, exposed to. So in this hexane processing method, the soybeans are bathed in the VOC hexane. And why? Because it separates the protein from the soybean oil. And then in the final stages of the soy processing, the hexane is steamed out of the protein, but there are trace amounts of that hexane that are still available and, and, and noticed in the food. But again, you're not going to find this information on the label because hexane is not an ingredient. It's not a raw product. It's considered a processing aid. And so therefore, it's not listed. But in 2009, research that was led by the Cornucopia Institute, they exposed the soy industry's hexane manufacturing process. And since that time, Oh my goodness, many, and I would say the majority of the natural food companies changed their extraction methods to something called hydraulic expeller pressing. And this is important to note because the hydraulic expeller processing extracts 25 to 45% less soy protein than the hexane does. So these companies are saying, we're going to have to charge a little bit more, but at least you're not going to be getting this volatile organic compound. Now, as you look at this list on the slide, these are deriver de derivatives, derivatives, goodness gracious. Um, I haven't had a lot of sleep lately, so <laughs> bear with me here. Derivatives of benzene are used as an additive in some foods. So to avoid this chemical, you need to read the label closely for these words. Now, again, this isn't gonna talk about hexane processing, but this just shows you that they use this as a food additive, which I think is important to note. Now, in addition, I want you all to write this down, go to the Cornucopia Institute website, and it's a simple address. It's just cornucopia. Dot org. And when you get there, they have everything's free. It's a nonprofit. They have a free publication that has information on snack bars and meat, vegan and vegetarian meat alternatives that have been manufactured using hexane solvents. So that you, when you, if you are vegan and you're using a, a, a meat alternative, you can buy the better product that doesn't have this. But it's also very important to note that hexane processing is prohibited prohibited in any food that is labeled organic. So as long as you're organic, you don't even have to read the labels or go to Cornucopia Institute. So again, it's just cornucopia.org. And they have a tremendous amount of resources there. Again, nonprofit, but my goodness, they're getting a lot of money from somewhere because they have the most amazing reports on eggs and dairy products and yogurt and meats. And you'll love that website. It's, it's a really good one to share. Now, huh, 
In addition, we want to avoid exposure when working if you have an art studio or if you have a hobby studio. Remember to use adequate ventilation or get an air sanitizer. Um, I know it sounds silly, but when you're operating your snow blower or your leaf blower and you're breathing all that stuff, it's not so good for you. And you may want to consider wearing a mask. I know we're, uh, we hate these masks, but my goodness, you know, think about the toxicants. You can check your personal care products for benzene content and many other chemicals at the Environmental Working Group's website called Skin Deep. And to find that, all you have to do is, is just Google EWG for Environmental Working Group, EWG Skin Deep, and it'll take you right there. And then, of course, you can go through your every personal care product. You can go through your cleaning products and find the ones that are safest for you. Now, all of that said, we do need to support our liver to assist our body's detoxification processes. So there are a number of foods, as you can see on the slide, that are known to support the liver, um, including things like um, beets um, and, and beetroot and things like that and, and carrots. So Several studies have shown that beets and beetroots, which are all again in super green juice, they help reduce the oxidative damage and inflammation in our livers. They also increase our natural detoxification enzymes in our body. And of course, carrots are famous for keeping our liver clean. They also reduce the, the fatty acids in the liver, which can on, a, on, a, on a, another basis, reduce the cholesterol level in our body. And when it comes to the green leafy greens, or, uh, the leafy greens that are in super green juice like chlorella or kale or spinach, they are loaded with antioxidants and fiber. And they too, because of that green, it's that if you're green inside, you're clean inside, they help to clean the blood the bloodstream as well as the liver. And then when it comes to blueberries and cranberries, a study showed that when a person was consumed, you know, in their in their study, when people consumed blueberries and cranberries for just 21 days, just three weeks, it showed protection of the liver from damage from um, um, toxicants in the body. Um, and, and of course, blueberries also increase our immune cell response and have those antioxidant enzymes in them. Also in super green juice, we have broccoli and cabbage, and they too are known for their high fiber content and their beneficial plant compounds. We know that broccoli and, and um, cabbage help increase detoxification enzymes and protect our liver from damage. And then of course, green tea in the super green juice. Of course, that's considered beneficial for our health. And the evidence does show that it does have particular benefits for our liver. And then of course the milk thistle in super green juice, it aids the liver in detoxification. It helps protect the liver and the body from toxic compounds. It stabilizes the cell membranes to, to prevent the intake of the toxins and prevent the tissue damage of the cell membrane. It also stimulates protein synthesis in the liver. So that means we can create new cells, healthier cells, cells. And there was a study published uh, by the National Institutes of Health in their, in their library of medicine that actually says that, and they say this, evidence exists that milk's Milk thistle may be hepato, liver, protective through a number of mechanisms. So we know that that's a good one. And then, of course, dandelion, which is also in super green juice. It's long been held in folk medicine as a liver tonic. And the newer studies today suggest that it's due to its ability to increase the flow of bile in the body. There was a study done about six years ago that stated that dandelion was beneficial to liver function because it reduces the stress on the liver and it supports the liver's ability to produce that bile. So dandelion can also help detoxify our liver and get those harmful chemicals um, out of our body. So just, you know, a serving or two of super green juice a day is so powerful in supporting the liver to get these toxicants out of our body. Now, 
we talk about detoxifying the gut. In 2019, again, the National Institutes of Health, they published a study uh, with PubMed and indicated, of course, that zeolite purifies the internal environment of our body, that it helps to maintain the gut microbiota, homeostasis, and it supports healthy brain activity. Um, and it really does improve the overall well-being of patients. And of course, Touchstone Essentials Pure Body targets the toxins in the digestive system and throughout the body, thanks to that optimal sizing that ensures that absorption. And of course, you know that Pure Body is that passive detox. It's gentle. It's safe. There's no digestive discomfort. I remember some of the cleanses from the seventies and oh my goodness, you would take a, you know, do a cleanse, take a cleanse, whatever they called it. And you would just be on the toilet all the time. And it was so harsh. So think of how pleasant this is, is to have this passive detox that's gentle and safe and doesn't give you that digestive discomfort. So we can clean up our gut. We can support the integrity of that, that wall in our gut, that, that intestinal membrane, and we can populate our microbiome with the right balance of that healthy microbes when our gut is healthy. But don't forget the homeostasis of that endocannabinoid system. That endocannabinoid system helps to regulate and balance all key body functions in our body. The American Journal of, of Physiology in 2015, they published a paper and said the dysregulation of the endocannabinoid system may contribute to the development of several intestinal disorders. And they went on to name them. So again, using this CBD oil can assist our gut, can assist our liver, liver and bring back that, that homeostasis. Uh, there was another study that was published by the National Institutes of Health, and they, in, in the closing statements of that study, said our results indicate that CBD indeed unravels a new therapeutic strategy to treat inflammatory bowel disease. And as a side note, there's even evidence that prebiotics and probiotics also positively affect that endocannabinoid system, which is why another serving of super green juice is even more beneficial when we use that on a daily basis. Now, of course, Touchstone Essentials CBD products are going to feed and support and balance our endocannabinoid system. Remember, they're organic. No solvents, no hexane was used, no artificial ingredients. They're fast acting. They're, they're, they come from non-genetically uh, modified plants and they're highly absorbable. So we've got the Calm 750. That's a broad spectrum CBD with 25 milligrams per serving. The Calm uh, Premium 1500 is also broad spectrum CBD with 50 milligrams per serving. And the Calm Advanced is, is 50, grams, uh, 50 milligrams of CBD per serving, but it's a full spectrum formula. Remember the broad spectrum CBD contains several of the, of the uh, cannabis plant compounds but it's typically um, entirely free of THC. So it, it still has the full spectrum of terpenes and flavonoids and cannabinoids, but it's typically um, TH, uh, free of THC. Whereas the full spectrum usually has just that legal amount, which is my goodness, I think it's 0.5% that's allowed. So let's consider then who can we help with this information tonight? Who do you know that's pregnant or nursing? Who do you know that has a home office? Who do you know that uses household cleaning products or any type of added fragrances? Who do you know that smokes cigarettes or drinks out of bottled waters, those plastic waters? Who do you know that has a hobby or art supplies or maybe that's their profession? Who do you know that burns candles in their home? Who do you know that works in construction or works in a tire shop? Have you ever gone to buy new tires and you walk in and you're just hit with that smell? Those are VOCs. Who do you know that's involved or employed in any of these industries that we talked about tonight? Or 
who do you know that microwaves food in disposable containers or consumes soy or soy products or those vegan or vegetarian meat alternatives? These are the people that you can help immediately with the products that we discussed this evening. So Craig, I'm going to send it back to you. Awesome. Thank you, Cindy. Let's get rid of those VOCs in our lives. Um, you know, and thank goodness Touchstone Essentials has some amazing products to help us out with that. Uh, I want to thank Cindy for being with us, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank you for being with us tonight. We learned a lot, a lot of great information that we can take and share with other people to make their lives that much better, along with making our own lives that much better. So thank you, Cindy, and thank you all for being here tonight. Have a wonderful evening. We'll see you next time. Nice. Take care, everybody. Mm -hmm.